Welcome everyone to another fabulous Goal Chat Live. I'm Deborah Eckerling. I'm author of Your Goal Guide and founder of The Deb Method, which is my system for goal setting simplified. And every Sunday night, I lead the Goal Chat Twitter chat. This month for June, we're rebuilding and I have so many awesome people. Anyway, we have Jen Ballard. Now, Jen and I have been friends for years for when we we worked on my kids adventures together and yeah. social media examiner and then we were roomies from as uh, for social media marketing world and then we have tannis Coghlan, and tannis is one of my friends from zula my tuesday night international passion based networking group and tannis is just she's just cool and we also have alina who's another one of my newer friends I, and i say this but I've also spoken for you twice in the last month, first for your Meet the Author panel and then your Finding Fabulous Summit, which was fabulous. And the thing that you all have in common, besides being strong, awesome, powerful women, is you just love life. You love what you do and it shows in every single conversation, which is why I chose you all to come here and talk about rebuilding. So this was the really kind of um, my intro to the intro. So Jen, why don't you tell people a little bit more about what you have been up to? What I have been up to? Well, I work full-time as Social Media Examiner, so speaking of reconnecting, I'm going back to work this week, so. <laughs> um, yeah, and but since I've been working home for the past year here in my dining room, um, I have, and I had uh, surgery earlier this year, which stopped me in my tracks from all my physical activities. I have um, created a kind of a passion project, a little website, and I actually have created two because I started something at the beginning of the pandemic and it was super exciting and everybody was all gung ho about it, but then it just really fizzled. It was a, a birthday party online birthday party company to show people how to keep their kids connected um, through Zoom. But then when school started online and everybody just got Zoom fatigue, it just, nobody wanted it anymore. So I pivoted and I switched it to a, a website more focused on adults called Disco Ball Designs. It's all about having fun. It's all about um, keeping yourself active. And the tagline is kind of dance, skate, celebrate, um, I have t-shirts, I have merch. Um, I'm just starting it, but we're going to do all sorts of fun activities. I have one of my shirts on here, time for a dance break. Um, <laughs> so um, it's all about having fun and connecting and keeping yourself happy and finding, making celebrations out of the everyday activities that you do, so. Which is the thing that I know that few people know, but I'm gonna kind of out us is so, this really calls back to what you originally wanted to do because you yeah. love more than anything, dancing, skating, being active and being out in the world. Yes. And then the pandemic hit and you're like, but people need these parties. Right. And then people got burnt out. So you re-repivoted and right. now you're, so I, I love the, what you're building or rebuilding. It really boomeranged back mm -hmm. to the original intent. And, those who know me and hear me speak though, it goes back to the mission and your mission of dance, skate, celebrate, that's been consistent through everything. Yes. So there yeah. you go. It's been fun. <laughs> it, well, it's been fun, but now is the time for opportunities and rebuilding. Yes. There we go. And so now we have Tannis. Hello. Hi, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit better? Because all I said was we're friends. So I think <laughs> um, so Tanis Coglin, I'm actually I have like three businesses going. Um, I'm an HR only consultant. three? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually from um, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And <laughs> so I um, am an HR consultant here. But I'm also uh, I also own Twilla Lifestyle Community, which is a community of healers um, that all get together and we put together programs for people uh, for healing. So I'm I'm a Reiki master, Aqua Lead master, Crystal master, um, and a Celtic shamanic high priestess. So I do like a whole wide variety of different healing um, for for people. 
And um, the third business is I got asked last year. So this is where I pivoted a bit because, you know, we've been in lockdown here. And so we haven't been able to do a whole lot of hands-on, although energy healing, you don't need to be hands-on. You can do it at a distance. Um, but I pivoted because it, it was less, you know, people that weren't wanting to go out. They didn't, you know. So I ended up starting a school. So I, I now have the Twilo Lifestyle Academy um, where I have the Inner Synergy program, which basically prepares people really well with all aspects of uh, getting into healing. Um, so it has, each level has Reiki, Aqualead, crystals, essential oils. I have an aromatherapist working with me. So she comes and does the essential oils. I have a holistic a holistic nutritionist working for me or, or with me and she comes and does the um, eating to raise your vibe classes um, and I also have a, a guy who's been in marketing for 20 years who's doing some business classes so that people are all set to start their own practices uh, when they finish the inner synergy program and do their own healing. Okay, so so mm -hmm. you are not only building things for yourself but you're you're helping others build mm -hmm. which is a great transition to Una <laughs> because from a different angle mm -hmm. that that's what what you are doing so why don't you tell the fine people more about oh my you, goodness. you well i've been pivoting left and right since 2018 actually 19. um i come from the event production business i've been uh i've had my own business been an entrepreneur for gosh, 15 years plus. And I decided to retire from social events at the end of 2018, had a back surgery, uh, wasn't very hands-on anymore with the design aspect of it and decided to produce my own events. Um, and I got into wedding events, the wedding expos, I did uh, luxury wedding shows. And then I created Ladies Take the Lead um because you know you just can't do just one thing of course so ladies take the lead started out as a networking community um that was local to los angeles and um i was doing that plus my marketing for my events and as i was starting out and signing clients uh basically event-based businesses to sign on for doing their marketing uh the pandemic hit <laughs> So all of my um, clients then put a hold, a little bit of a pause on what was going on because no more events for a very long time. Actually, it's been over a year. And so I had to pause that company. It was a great company, but we had to pause it because it wasn't going to happen. So I really um, took on Ladies Take the Lead and from a networking community in Los Angeles, it within the past year became a nationwide connection for networking women entrepreneurs. Um, I've been doing events, virtual events uh, for the past year. Uh, launched a podcast, launching another one coming soon. Um, so it's been really great connecting women and helping them rebuild, helping them pivot. And now because the world is opening back up again, I'm very excited to resurrect and rebuild my marketing company. Um, however, it's the, the funniest thing is that because of this opportunity with Ladies Take the Lead, I've ventured out of just event-based businesses, but now I help indie brands and creatives. Um, I have a great client like Melanie Mills, which is an amazing beauty brand who I do marketing for. So I am now launching back up Finding Fabulous Media and Finding Fabulous Media, uh, basically what I do is I help indie brands, creatives and event based businesses find their fabulous by providing creative marketing solutions that will develop and define their version of their best brand. And we do branding, content creation, podcast producing, and of course, we produce events, which are going to be crazy busy happening in 2022. I'm so excited about that. It, it, it seems like a long way away for events, but you know you're going to blink and events will be back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, my the community, my event uh, vendors, I, I have a great community uh, and friends that I keep up with. And all of a sudden, 
just this past month, they've been all getting booked up. And with events, you usually book up a year in advance. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited to hear that they're actually booking, they're posting their first parties and next year they're doing bigger and bigger events. So it's coming back. I'm so excited. Well, one of the, the things that, and you know, there are no accidents, but you live in LA, I live in LA. We haven't met in person, but we met because a friend of mine in New York was at a different networking event with a friend of yours, with Tanya, who's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. And Tanya and I connected and she's like, no, you need to meet Alina. So via New York, oh, and the other part is Tanya grew up a couple of towns over from me in Chicago. So it's just the, the ping pong of connections is ridiculous, but I think that's really been the biggest blessing of the pandemic is there are more opportunities to meet, connect, form partnerships, and get to know new cool people. And everybody knows, you know, my pivot story, my book came out in January 2020, which was all about helping people embrace change. And two months later, everybody had change thrust upon them. And I went from my big thing was I loved in-person events because you get to meet people and hand out the gold stars for good work and effort. And then all of a sudden, no more events. So something that had been on my goal list for a long time, doing online workshops, more speaking, it became the only option. So sometimes you push, sometimes you jump. The reason I do what I do is to help people figure out the plan so they take a huge leap into what they desire after they've done the groundwork. Because I think that that's the basics of everything. We all love what we do. When you love what you do, it leaks all over everything and people can feel it. A few weeks ago, someone said yes. And when you don't love what you do, then that shows too. Yes. So you yeah. need that sort of balance. So what is, and, and I'm gonna, I'm going to pivot the conversation a little bit because I want to do a little of that get to know you thing. What is something about you that people would be very surprised to discover? Mm. And I'm going to start with Jen. Oh no. <laughs> You're in the hot seat. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. You're welcome, Jen. No. Um, I actually kind of have this conversation with my husband. He's a super introvert. And I say, you know, technically I'm an introvert too. People don't believe it because I love to like get up and do stuff and be on stage and stuff. But I, I'm kind of, a, I call myself a performing introvert. So I like to get up and get that attention. But like one-to-one -one conversations or really small group conversations are really hard for me. And um, I'm perfectly happy to sit and read a book or work on the computer. Like the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was like, I can't stand this. I can't see my friends. I was like, I'm cool. <laughs> I was happy to, you know, not have to go out and stuff. So people are very surprised to learn that I consider myself to be an introvert. I am very surprised to hear that. And we've been friends yes. a long time. Yeah. Because you, and your husband, because we've been at social media marketing world and your husband's like, I'm the opposite of Deb. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's definitely an introvert, a traditional introvert, but I, I don't know. I think maybe I'm right in the middle. Like some, whenever I take the, the tests, the um, Myers-Briggs tests, it's like 4951 one way or the other, depending on how I ask, answer two of the questions. I, I, I've taken it, you know, three times in a row sometimes just to see, to try to see which one I really am. And it's like, sometimes it's this way and sometimes it's that way. So yeah. But, um, yeah. I know, I know it's, I I'm, learned something kind of weird that way, <laughs> but that's something that people are surprised that I consider myself to be an introvert. And so what about you, Tanis? I, I, speaking on the same subject, I'm probably like you, Jen, um, because really? yeah, well, I'm an empath. Um, so I feel everybody else's emotions. Mm. So I am an extrovert, but there gets to a point where I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to just be step back um, for a bit to kind of regroup, right? Yeah. To fill myself up again with the energy and stuff to make sure that I'm 
I'm able to go out there again. So yeah, so I would say that I'm similar to you in that sense. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Yay, yeah, I met somebody else. <laughs> so, so one thing that probably people don't know about me is that I'm, I've been in theater. So I, I did oh. a bunch of local theater for a number of years. And so, yeah, so like you, the performing, the performing introvert, right? Although right. I do think I'm a bit extroverted because I tend to get energy from hanging out with other people, but I do get to the point where I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so nice to meet you and have nice. that in common. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to use that though. The next time someone asks me this question, because I did community theater after after college when I moved back. Okay, I did two shows, but it was I was one of those in high school. I was I was like quiet adjacent, so I did even though I auditioned for everything, only was cast in one show. I worked crew, but I did have a little a little dip the toe in community theater for a while. And it, it was fun. I, I personally like this kind of theater because I can perform here in front of everybody without leaving my home. As an extrovert, I, I've, I don't like traffic. So I've been able to be extroverted like every single day without leaving my house. So I love those parts of it. And what about you, Alina? Oh my gosh, I'm listening to both of you and I'm like, oh, that's me. The, the funny thing is that I would consider myself an introvert. Um, I've always been behind the scenes, especially with event production. I was the one that was shining the spotlight on my clients or the brands that I worked with. So this pandemic has forced me to come out of the back and be the face of my brand. And what I didn't realize is that thinking that I'm an introvert because I'm so fine working by myself and I'm so fine being at home. I have a major vitamin D deficiency because I haven't been out in a while. My doctor doesn't know how I'm walking. And, you know, um, but I realized that I'm not an introvert. I'm an extrovert and I was just in hiding. Um, I get a rush actually of, of doing these, doing my podcast, um, going on Zoom speaking. I get a little terrified. You get the butterflies in there sometimes, especially when you're presenting. But I've been doing this for quite a while and I guess practice does make perfect because um, you know, after doing this for so long, it just becomes second nature and it's fun getting out there. So I, when I started doing these virtual events and actually um, hosting them, and now I host for a company that I market for a weekly uh, segment for them, it's been really fun. I love hosting and something that people don't know about me. And I guess it, it ties into it is that I used to be a ballet dancer. Ooh. And it was a rush going on stage and performing after the butterflies. But, you know, that ovation to me was just like, oh, my God, they like me. <laughs> so it, it, it's interesting. I, I, I guess, you know, I, um, I love it and, I, and I'm afraid of it, but I'm, I'm always wanting to take on a challenge and go for it. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you in this it, for the practice makes perfect because when I first started doing these kind of things online, I was really nervous at the beginning of the pandemic. That was something that I had to sort of get into, right, was being able to do this kind of thing. And now I've, I've started my own podcast, too. So it's 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 fun. It's fun. It now, is. You know? it's but it was fun. Fun. it's a it's a it's a pivot. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. one thing everybody has discovered is you can fill all day, every day, as much as you want, right? Yes. <laughs> There's always something fun and new to create, to put out into the world. And, and have you noticed things changing yet in the last month? Or are you, wh where are you in the, in the status of, I'm still thinking versus go, go, go? Should I go? Oh, <laughs> um, I'm always go, go, go. And yes, I've noticed a lot has changed within the past month. I think Zoom fatigue has become a real reality, especially yeah. the weather right now is so fabulous and people are going out. I actually took my first trip in a year to San Diego uh, to see my family who I haven't seen in over a year. 
So I think that people want to go out, they want to socialize, even the introverts, even ourselves, you know, the ones that are, are the introverts want to get out there and do something because um, being locked up is not fun for over a year. So I think there's a lot of change coming. I do believe that the summer is going to be a huge pivot. And a lot of people who have been relying on social media, on Zoom, on, you know, these types of chats are going to have to really kind of rebrand, rebuild, revisit what they're doing right now, because it's all coming back. Like I've said in the beginning, the event industry is is coming back with a big boom and people are booking for 2022. So it's going to be interesting. I like the hybrid idea of it because I've created such a base with Ladies Take the Lead, where it started off as a small networking community in LA. And because of the pandemic, it grew so much. So for me, it's going to be interesting to see how we're going to keep that up. But um, with the media company that I'm coming back to, and now, um, you know, from event-based businesses now to brands and creatives offering that service, it's just uh, showing me that it's grown. So it'll be interesting. I, I'm, I'm very fascinated to see what happens. It, it's really funny though, isn't it? Like a year ago when this all started, it's like, I wonder what life's gonna be like a year from now. <laughs> and it's different-ish, mm -hmm. right? It, it's in, in some ways it's, you see there's gonna be old normal, but I think there's a lot of new normal of this whole hybrid thing. Yes. And maybe it's, people need a break and then they'll be okay with more hybriding. A hybrid, a hybrid, they, they need a, there's a good word in here. It's something like a hybrid nation. Hybridization. So hybridization. hybridization. Hybridization, yeah. The, they're gonna that? be ready to hybrid again. Yeah. I so think so. A, I definitely yeah. think so. So yeah. what, a, what about you, Jen? You, you had a mandatory break from activities on top of right everything else and and so how have you been feeling about this new transition um i'm excited about things opening back up again at least being able to go outdoors and um i think it's gonna be i like you said i think it won't go back entirely to where it was. I think a lot of people have experienced now and a lot of businesses now have experienced having their people work from home and seeing that it has actually worked. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that it's there's going, going to be big changes. I am glad that I'm not in the commercial real estate industry. Because oh, yes. I'm sure it's going to be hard to, to lease office space because companies realize that they can have their workforce working from home and still, you know, business can continue certain types of businesses, of course, you know, restaurants and well, even restaurants, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see how it evolves into this combination of realizing that things work from home and as well as from the office or from the site. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's exciting. It's a whole new world. So I a think lot of so eyes. with what you said about the workers, um, employees, I think that they've had a taste a little bit of freedom. Yes. Because mm -hmm. the nine to five thing, you know, which commutes, the, the getting ready and everything. I think that although they've had to be at home and working at home, they were a little bit more free to do things. So yeah. I think it's going to change a lot. The, pro the productivity that I've read about so many companies hasn't changed. Actually, right. hasn't hasn't uh, hurt them. So I think, yeah, with the real estate industry, commercial real estate, I think we're going to see a, lot, a different kind of a landscape. That's for sure. Yes, Absolutely, I think so. I think mm -hmm. so. I know I'm going back to work on Thursday, so that's Are you going my, to I'll be two your, weeks your post. Like to back to the office. Yeah. Back to the office. Yeah. And can you work from home if you want to. I, I don't think so. They haven't <laughs> talked about it. They haven't talked about it. But um, but my company before had several people. We only we have about 50 people, but only about 10 of us are at the office. I so see. we were already a distributed company before the pandemic hit. Got it. So, and there were certain people who they wanted at the office. So, yeah. And you're one of them. I'm one of them. You're a key person. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 
nice to be important, but it's been really nice being able to work from home and, you know, go and take something out of the freezer for dinner and, you know, get something started and eat lunch with my, my kids. I have teenagers, you know, it's been kind of nice to not have to be completely out of the picture for most of the day. So yeah, we'll see. I, I can ask if I can, you know, ease back into it, but it would yeah. be nice to see a hybrid model for yes, well, you know? definitely. Because I think that there is value from a, an employer perspective yeah. of having people at the office. There's a lot of um, creative problem solving that happens, like at the at the water cooler, right, or like right. in the in the you know in the coffee room or whatever. Right. So that Absolutely. kind of thing is kind of not happening. So there's some of that that would be nice. So, you know, I think a hybrid of a, a couple of days one way and a couple of days the other would be nice. You'd have all your meetings kind of in the days that you're in the office, you know, right. and then the rest could be done from home. I think that kind of hybrid would be nice. That would well, be perfect. Well, you, I have noticed that I've missed a lot of, I, mean, I feel like I'm not in the loop as much this year. Because mm -hmm, there's a of lot of things going on in different departments. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So to hand us you have your HR hat. Yeah. So are you speaking that from your HR hat standpoint? Yeah. So are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, for me, now I've worked from home for, for a while, even my last, my last several um, long-term or anchor type gigs have been from home. I haven't been to an office since 2012, no. My, I say my, the last time I commuted for work is when I was on a jury for six weeks, <laughs> which was at the end of 2013. Uh, so I love working from home. I don't, any of you who are watching or listening who have to go back to an office, I have all the empathy in the world for you. I don't know how comfortable I'd be. I mean, I'm, I'm in my little dev world, so that part hasn't changed. The only thing that changed is I'm connected to people every day rather than leaving the house to meet with clients or speak or do workshops. So the only thing and clients who used to be phone calls are now zoom because mm -hmm. that is more normal. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we, we get a lot of pro productivity done that way, you know, because yeah. we can't have a lot of meetings back to back without the travel time between particularly with clients, right. Or mm -hmm. with, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and I think that people are, are more willing, but there is the Zoom fatigue yeah. that is taking hold. So that's why this hybrid thing uh, would be kind of cool because you would be able to have a mixture of the two. And uh, you'd still be able to have that. And the people that aren't all that fussy on coming into the office, you know, they might be okay to ha come in a day or two, two to have meetings. It does help you feel more like part of the team, right? Your engagement yes. team does increase when you have in-person meetings. It's like having a, a weekly um, team building exercise then, right? You get together for a team meeting and socialize a little bit, so. Yeah. Yes. And, and I do know that there are companies that do weekly team building on Zoom because that's what they had to do. But that, but we're, we're rebuilding. So let, let's talk about rebuilding. What is it? What are you most excited about being able to do to rebuild now in this? I hate calling it a new normal, but do you have a better word? I think that's kind of like that label that's going to stay that way for quite a while. Pivot and new normal. I mean, that's what you've been hearing for the past year. So it's here to stay, folks. That's it. Yeah. Yes. And the other thing that at least I've noticed, at least when I've been speaking is the whole balance thing. It's been very difficult for people to start and end their day. They had much longer work days. So one of my soapboxes is, you know, schedule the lunch break, schedule the end of the day and have downtime on the weekends. Because if you work, 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 you're just going to fizzle. You need to find what makes sense for you and do more of that, but schedule the time to do the things. And for, those of you who all have multiple businesses and passion projects, it's very easy to work always on something. And that's fine. If you love what you're doing, you should do it, but not to discount the self-care aspect, the downtime. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for sure. I so, think that in terms of rebuilding for me, um, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to having in-person classes again. Because I, I like teaching on Zoom, but when you're teaching energy healing and stuff like that, it's much nicer to be able to do that in person, right? Because it is about connections and stuff. So I think for me that that's something I'm looking forward to and, and building that part up a little bit more again and seeing clients again. Cause yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with that. I didn't mention in my intro, but uh, the third thing I do, which is a third job slash my own de-stressing self-care stuff is I teach a dance fitness class called UGM. Um, and Last June, I, I was teaching two classes a week at 24 Hour Fitness. And last June, we got a robocall and all the instructors were just cut. We're gone. So um, we've really missed everybody, the students and the instructors have all just missed the energy that you get in a live class. Um, being together and dancing and high-fiving and all that. I was teaching virtually and it just no, it was not the same at all. I mean, a high-five like this, just, yeah. <laughs> That's not the same kind of energy at all. But yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting classes back in the gym again. And I'm a hugger, so I'm really looking oh, forward yeah. to hugging people again. Yeah. It's an energy thing too, right? It's an energy exchange okay. when you hug, so it could be really healing too. So It's nice to hug people. It, it's, it just gives you all the warm and fuzzies. Yeah. So what, what things have you been doing to keep yourself uh, healthy? What routines for self-care and healthy living will you rebuild? Oh Alina? my God. Well, for me personally, I walk my dog and that gets me out of the house and, uh, instead of being all cooped up inside. And I, I've been working for myself for quite a long time. I, I actually had a production studio and, and, I, and I shut it down when I retired from the business and I went to work from home and it was fabulous. I, I did that for, you know, all of 2019 and I loved it. Um, but I did have lunches with my clients and I did a commute a lot and meet them. I didn't know what zoom was. I wish I did cause I would have invested in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was, just, it was, it was my time. And, and the thing is the, the funny thing is with self care, what I did to kind of like unwind and uncheck, uh, it was basically go to the movie theater on a Tuesday afternoon, turn off my phone and like watch a movie. And for me, that kind of like really, when you're when you're not thinking about work, not thinking about every anything else, but just focusing on the movie, it's just so relaxing for me personally. And then when I walk out and see 20 messages and missed calls and this and that, back to reality. But I do miss the fact that I'm not able to go to a movie theater. It's not the same trying to unwind in front of Netflix and have your phone right next to you. The movie theater forces you to shut things down. Um, so I've been walking the dog a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> long walks and I believe you know my, my dog loves it he tires him out so I'll be continuing to do that <laughs> absolutely <laughs> both great great exercises and I I have a friend who um my movie going pal that's what we haven't in a couple of years it's been a couple of years but whenever we go to the movies it would be like on a Thursday at two because mm -hmm. when you I have that flexibility. Right. It's awesome. And then you're like, it's still daylight. Wow. If we grab a quick bite, maybe I can get some more work done. Probably not the best attitude, but yeah. the breaks that take you away from your phone, mm -hmm. I think are the best kind. No, I, I absolutely loved it because I would go pick up my son from uh, school and I'm a huge, another thing maybe people don't know about me, I'm a huge Marvel fan. So um, all the Marvel movies, when they came out, I mean, I saw them on the first day. I would take my son from school, finish at 2.30. We would go to Universal Studios, City Walk, watch the movie and, and be out and it's still daylight. And I would have time with my kid. And that's the best part about, you know, working for yourself and not being attached to anything and making your own schedule is just that you can just stop for a second. You can block that time on your calendar some people think you're, you know, in a meeting. No, yeah, I'm in a meeting with my kid at the movies. And that's the best. So I miss that. I miss that connection, the bonding that we had there. I mean, he's in the other room studying and, and it's it's been interesting. Uh, we've worked it out. 
<laughs> but I miss just like taking him out and 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 going to the the movies with him. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So you you'll probably resurrect that when school starts back in real life. Oh yeah. Well, they're over the summer planning on doing that as well. Absolutely. We Cruella came out and we actually didn't go to the movies because we're kind of like, you know, still eh, teeter tottering on that. So we ended up watching it on Netflix. And I have to say the whole time I was not Netflix, but Disney plus the whole time I was watching Cruella, it was a great film. I'm thinking to myself, gosh, if I was in the movie theater, the experience would be so much better. Yeah. The big screen. Exactly. Yeah. And the speakers too, right? So, I know the speakers. So sound. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the summer of just like, catching up on Black Widows coming out you know, soon. So I'll be, I'll be every Marvel movie, you know where I'll be the first day. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, that's your form of meditation. Exactly, yeah. Because you, that's that escape thing. Mm -hmm. That's my escape. Mm -hmm. so, so what about you, Tannis? What did you did before, what did you do before and how did you adjust it? And what are you looking forward to going back to? Um, so my meditation, I've always done that. Uh, well, I shouldn't say always, I, I'm a late bloomer in that, but I've done it for the last, you know, 10 years. Um, so yeah, that's gonna continue. Um, I think probably the time that I did it has changed. I'm doing it like before I go to bed now, instead of like in the middle of the day. So I may do it more in the middle of the day, um, start getting up a little earlier because I'm a bit of a night hawk so, or a night owl. So I'm up till late and don't get up till late. So um, I'm gonna change my schedule a little bit, I think, especially with the summer, you know, you wanna get more sunlight time and yeah. that stuff. So that's probably something I'm gonna change a little bit. Uh, going for walks, of course, that's great, connecting with nature. Um, one thing I'd like to do is get back to classes, like doing like either, um, probably I'm, I'm really itching to try Tai Chi. I haven't tried it. So itching to sort of try something like that. So that's one thing that uh, I'm hoping to try. Oh, fun. Okay. And in the meantime, you could like Google YouTube videos and, and mm -hmm. learn a little bit. So by the time you get to class, you're like, the, the there's less of a learning curve, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've done some of that with yoga. I've done a bit of uh, yoga from the from the YouTube channel and stuff. Like yeah. That. So, and Jen, I think you've already gone back to, <laughs> haven't you? To my classes? Yeah, well, so what were you doing for self-care and how are you yeah. re readjusting it? Uh, well, before the pandemic, I was teaching UJAM and also taking other people's classes. I was probably doing four to five days a week. Um, and then the pandemic started, so I switched to online classes, and that was really hard <laughs> to not have the energy and to, to try to get the technology all working also was a challenge. But it was kind of good because, you know, it's like, oh, I, I did it, you know. Um, but, and then uh, just probably since the beginning of the year, uh, we've started doing classes in the park with social distancing. So that's kind of a step towards back to where we were. Um, and now some classes are opening back up at the gym. So hopefully by the end of summer, I'll be back to a gym class and hopefully I can get a job again doing it and teaching. I'd love to do that. I'm really disappointed that they just fired everybody and they're not bringing people back to the same classes that existed before. Oh. They're hiring brand new people who didn't even know because wow. they had, yeah, they fired all the managers to all the, the exercise instructor managers. So they don't know who was teaching and, you know, they're just starting from zero. At, I heard a the, lot about that in different industries that they're just yeah. rebuilding and starting from zero and bringing new people on. And then, of course, some people, you know, went ahead and found their other other jobs, or right. businesses. So it's it's interesting to see what happens. Yeah, that. yeah. There are some gyms that maintained some uh, a smaller gym that I know of kind of maintained um, contact with their people, and they kept them on 
you know, employed if, even if they were kind of furloughed or whatever, mm -hmm. but then the gym where I was working, they just cut everybody and they are starting from zero. So it's kind of a shame because yeah. we all had these great communities, you know, every Tuesday was so-and-so's class and we had 50 people and we would all, you know, we all got to know each other over the years and we don't have that to go back to. Um, so it's, yeah, it's going to be an interesting process of rebuilding and finding our finding our community again. So yeah, we'll mm -hmm. see. That's yeah. really interesting because I, well, from my perspective, all the communities that I've been involved with have only strengthened because yeah. of the internet connection. Yeah. And so to hear of the ones that have just gone by the wayside, that is, it's, it's sad. sad. It's, sad. it's like it pre everything social. And I think I can safely say we're all old enough to have gone to high school and college and not stay connected with the people yes. like kids today. Um, you meet, you connect, and obviously it's on different platforms depending on your your generation, right? But mm -hmm. the people I'm connected to from high school and college are people that I sought out because yeah. it didn't stay that way. So I think a lot, a lot of what I'm hearing is some of these connections are, are similar to that when you didn't have the choice, which is kind of funny because now staying connected is a choice that most people lean towards. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. When we all agree, <laughs> let's see what kind of conversation can I start where we don't agree? <laughs> Well, this is the challenge. You you bring together people who you know will get along, and then they yeah. get along. Yeah. Okay, I'm not surprised, but anyway, <laughs> so we're we're hitting this phase, and you've all had some rebuilding within your last year. So I would like to give people some rebuilding goals. What is one thing? that you did that works really well for you and it could be pre during or now that you think would be a good goal to give to the people who are listening and kind of scratching their head and be like yes i know i need to re-enter the active world what do i do first so alina what do you think people need to do first um, well, if you are an entrepreneur, if you own your own business, then you need to look at your branding, your messaging, and figure out if it applies to the current condition and tweak that. Um, I can speak for entrepreneurs and uh, uh, small businesses because that's who I work with. I haven't been in an office or working for somebody since 2000 and two and proud of it uh, or three but no um you definitely need to really look at your brand and see what's working what's not refresh it it's time to refresh actually and mm -hmm. and focus on that your messaging uh see if that's working for you your website update everything go through everything the summertime is a great time um i know that with the special events that i was in are usually other than summer weddings, it kind of dies down. People love to travel. So this might be your time to kind of like look into your own business and and uh, look at the back end of it, look at the front end of it and kind of freshen it up. So I would definitely put a goal there and do that. I'm constantly doing that because I'm constantly, I, I, I constantly have to evolve and next project, next project for me. So um, that's why I'm working on, on my new website for Finding Fabulous. Um, and I think people should definitely look into that, rebrand and refresh. I, I, I love it and it's perfect. And, mm -hmm. and if I were, well, my answer to everything is start with D, determine your mission. Look mm -hmm. at where you are now, where you want to go. It's the perfect time to make new plans, but also to look at the plans you've made and put a fresh coat of paint on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Tannis, what goal would you like to gift to our audience? Um, I think a great goal is to do something for yourself every day. 
in terms of personal or like for either self healing or self um, self care aspects. And you know we have different areas of self care, right? We've got the psychological self care, we've got your spiritual self care, your, your physical self care. So you know vary those up a little bit and think outside the box. Connecting with people is also a self care. That's a social self care. So I encourage people to really kind of, you know, make a goal to do something for yourself every day, whether it's, um, and I think we spoke a lot about connection. I really think, you know, making a goal for yourself to connect and see one person. Once we can, right, connect and see one person every week, right, Ooh. and have coffee or have whatever right go out and have a meal together or go for a walk together or go to a movie together you yeah. know i like that plans with one person a week i know we're all busy but even if it's a, a half hour coffee with somebody it'll help to kind of get us back into connecting with our friends and you can have that those personal in person and I personally think that it's such a crucial point. You know, when when prior to the pandemic, I would go out to lunch. I would I would I would take clients out to lunch. I think that's very important to connect because that's how you build relationships. That's how you find out what the person likes, what the person doesn't like, and you can go forward and building mutual relationships. And it kind of becomes a snowball effect. And and yeah. it's really about word of mouth then afterwards. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, you know, those relationships are really what helps your business grow. For sure. For sure. And I think the, um, you know, the other thing that I, I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I, when the pandemic started, I kind of have made sure that I reach out to at least, you know, two or three people a day on mm -hmm. chat or in some way to make sure that I'm keeping those connections, right? Because especially with, you know, being in business, you need to stay in touch with your clients and stuff. Yep. So making sure you reach out to them every so often throughout the whole thing and doing that client relationship management too. Good. Like mm -hmm. it. Yes. Yes. And I repeat this. You've all heard me say this. You can't reach your goals on your own. You need your people. And back pre-pandemic, I would always say a good networking goal is to do one event a week during. There's no reason you can't do three or four because you don't have to travel and people are at your fingertips. So I think that's a really nice transitional goal to get back to it. And the reaching out, the even the hi, how are you messages to just check in. Everything doesn't need to be a salesy message. You're genuinely interested in your people. So behave that way. So I am agreeing with everything. So Jen, yes. what is your bonus goal for? Well, I have been thinking a lot about, uh, because I'm going back to the office this coming week, um, how I can maintain the additional time that I've been spending with my family. Mm. I've been seeing my kids a lot more this year. They've both been home for school. They're older. They're very self-sufficient. They're 17 and 21, but they're both at home. And I've seen them a lot this year, which has been really nice. Um, so my goal as I leave home <laughs> is to try to keep connected a little better than maybe I was before when I was working full time as they go back to school, go back to campus and stuff. Um, you know, maybe make an effort to, like you were saying, meet for lunch or have something planned one evening a week that's, you know, just some time together um, to make sure that we, especially as they're getting older, they're going to leave the nest soon. I want to make sure that we stay connected as they leave so we can have something established when they're off in their own lives in the next year or two. Yeah, I the one just turned that. 21, I'm kind of freaking out about that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. mine's 22 and yeah. lives in Toronto, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's home he's, now, but um, once this is all over, I can easily see him saying, okay, bye. My so I want to make- and, and five, <laughs> and my 16 year old, you know, that's why I want the movies to come back because that's what that was our time. Now he's just in his room doing his thing. Yeah. I have a five year old, the little one, but I just miss those. We have dinners yeah. and everything else, but it was just our time, it's just yeah. the two of us. Yeah. 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 So. Ways to keep connected with my family mm -hmm. that I had more of, or always easier during the pandemic. I want to figure out ways to maintain that. So I would encourage others to do that too, as they 
make the transition back to the office if, if they're doing that. A nice way to do that too with kids that are away is, so what was one good thing ha that happened to you today? Yeah. Right, what are you grateful for today? What yeah. happened was good, right? Yeah. I used yeah, to do that with my son when he was little. We would have, he'd come home from school and over dinner, we'd be like, okay, so one good thing, one bad thing, start with the bad thing. <laughs> yeah. So you're ending with a good thing, right? You want to end on a good note. So start right. with that. The lows yeah. and highs of the day. Right. Well, it got, them, to, it got them talking, mm -hmm. right? It got them talking. Because yeah, sometimes yeah. Really yeah. bad as they get older, so. Yeah. They so do it, that in Boy Scouts too. My, my kids are both, well, one's this close to his eagle. The first one has his eagle, but throughout Boy Scouts, whenever a camp out or an activity ends, they say, okay, thorns and roses. They go around the circle, everybody gives a thorn, and then they go around the circle, everybody gives a rose. Huh. Yeah, a, a minus and a plus about the event or yeah. the day or the camp out or whatever. So yeah, I like that. Yeah, that That's a great question as we wrap up. So I'm gonna ask you all what, and then we can leave with like a final tip, but what has been your biggest thorn over the last year? And what has been the best rose? So, what are, are your, what is your thorn and rose from the last year? Mm. Jen, do you want to start? Okay. Um, thorn has been losing my classes. Definitely, I've really missed teaching in person and the energy of the students being there, um, and having to start over. You know, because they're not bringing us back. Um, the roses, I would say, um, not having so many distractions and places to drive and places to be all the time has really let me focus and um, create this new business that I started this year. So that's kind of exciting. And it's been um, a really good way to learn new things and prove to myself that I can do something new and different and grow something. Yay, so, gotcha. Yeah, that's been something really good that's come out of this situation. Fantastic. So, Tannis? Um, so, the thorn is not seeing people. <laughs> I miss my peeps. And <laughs> that's definitely that one. Um, I would say the good thing, though, is really being able to expand my network. You know, being able to uh, have meet people all over the world on Zoom. Yeah because that's been a lot of fun and being able to, you know, create new relationships, different types of relationships with people and, and collaborate with people all over the world because of the new way of doing things with Zoom and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with that. The connections, the, I mean, I wouldn't know two of you if it weren't for the connections I've made over the last year. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So, Alina. Yes. Um, biz, you know, the thorn business-wise, honestly, I am, um, I don't have any thorns for business. Obviously, you know, not seeing people, this and that. My thorn is personal. Unfortunately, I lost my uncle this past year, and um, it's been very difficult for my family. Um, so that was a major, it was a gutted thorn. Um, business wise though, a rose that I have is that I've been very, very creative and have taken on challenges and, uh, just whatever came to me, it just, it opened up more doors from lo you know, local events to being able to touch people across the U S I mean, New York, Chicago, I've got people there. I've gotten to do a lot of creative things with the podcast, with writing, with, uh, just design. I, I mean, and now I'm uh, launching Finding Fabulous. So that business-wise, yes, it's been an amazing, uh, amazing process for me and, and the learning lesson, uh, definitely. So that's that's my <laughs> two seconds. I think well, it's really great because everybody's had such a big learning curve, mm -hmm. yeah. but everybody's really risen to the challenge. And so mm -hmm. we've all learned so much. Mm -hmm. It's being resilient, so really. really. It's being, it's being resilient and and yeah. whatever happens just don't give up you know um yeah. and something that my uncle's passing has taught me is we have one life to live so go get them and get them hard you know enjoy yeah. what you have absolutely so yeah. is that your final thought 
you want life to live, so get them. Go get them hard. I find your fabulous, actually. That's, <laughs> that's my that's my thing. You know, it's like it's you hear this. You know, live your best life and everything. You know what? We're all in the process of trying to get there. We're all in the tr process of trying to live our best lives. How many of us actually do or practice living our best lives? I, I know that's a great little top, you know, saying, but is it true? Is it really true? I don't know. But the thing is that finding your fabulous, that's a practice where you're actually trying to do it daily. So you're trying to get there. That's a goal that is a little bit more achievable than living your best life. So that's that's my thought of the day. Just, you know, try to find your fabulous. Try to get there. Well, I am surrounded by fabulous today. So I think that is a perfect yay raw thing for for you to share so i thank you tannis what is your final thought um i would say find your tlc Ooh. find your ten tender loving care in whatever that is that you're doing so whether you're giving tlc to others or to yourself find your tlc excellent and jen what do you want people to find oh. or you can do something Fine. Oh, I feel the pressure now. I have to find something. Okay, <laughs> find a way to celebrate. <laughs> that, yeah, that's my, awesome. my company mantra. You know, celebrate daily. Find the. It's related to what both of you said, which is um, basically every day. Look for the joy. Look for something that you can celebrate and be happy about. Well, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you all so much. Now, real quick, Alina, where can people find you? Uh, well, they can find me on ladiestakethelead.com, which is up and running and has been <laughs> for the past year and growing our community. Uh, Ladies Take the Lead is a Facebook group. Um, launching tomorrow is findingfabulousmedia.com. So I'm very excited about that. You can follow all of that, Ladies Take the Lead, Finding Fabulous Media, and actually me, Alina.Friedman, on Instagram. And i um, happy to connect, reach out, DM me. I'm always uh, available to chat with anyone that's interested in learning more about me or my business. Fantastic, thank you. And Tannis, where can people find you? Uh, TwilloLifestyle.ca. And also of course on Facebook and Instagram as well. And yeah, you know, reach out, ask questions, be curious for sure. I'm happy to answer questions as well and DM and help you find your, your <laughs> Excellent. And Jen? I am at discoballdesigns.com. Um, and I'm also on Instagram, discoballdesigns, disco underscore ball underscore designs. And on Facebook, I have a group called Dance, Skate, Celebrate 80s. And it's got lots of fun 80s humor and kitschy stuff. So it's a lot of fun. We talk about cool stuff and reminisce and it's very good Gen X stuff. Um, I love that. I have to join. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> it dance with the with the straight line skates. Celebrate eighties. It's lots of fun. I'm gonna check it out. I love the eighties. Oh so, yes, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Well, my my dance, my hip hop nickname is Gen X. Gen with a J. So, oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, so my my Facebook group is all about for you know for Gen Xers and just fun stuff. I'm there. I'm totally awesome. This. I can't wait to have you there. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm also yeah. I'm yeah, I haven't started yet. I created an account, but since I'm all about dancing and stuff, I'm looking into TikTok. So mm -hmm. I have disco ball designs on TikTok uh, reserved, awesome. but I haven't done anything yet. So I'm lurking. So maybe we'll see. We'll do some some Gen X friendly challenges. <laughs> YouTube is a great one too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just started YouTube. So oh, that, did you? That's a great. fun one too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you can be nice and creative on there. All sorts of different. Stuff. YouTube cool. is great. Yeah, no, all all these social media platforms are great. Kind of like dabble a little bit in everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one at a time. I'm trying to call them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you all so much for joining today. And thank you all for watching, listening. Uh, again, I'm Deborah Eckerling, author of Your Goal Guide and founder of The Dev Method. And you can learn more about my book, 
go to yourgoalguidebook.com and I'm at the Deb Method everywhere. And you can go to thedevmethod.com slash blog for the recap of this. Please join Gold Chat Twitter chat every Sunday night, Gold Chat Live next Monday and every Monday. And on Thursdays, I release new episodes of the Dev Show podcast. So you have your goals. We're all excited to rebuild, re-enjoy, re-energize forth and be happy.